Roger, let's look at the positions of two groups of good thinking scientists. One group would say consciousness is an epiphenomena, it's an accidental occurrence here in this little tiny planet in the outskirts of one galaxy and maybe never would occur again and if we ran the tape of history again probably wouldn't have occurred. Others would say that consciousness is so fundamental that it underlies all reality. It's the deepest principle that generates the, the whole cosmos. I mean, unbelievably wide spectrum mm -hmm. of thinking. Mm -hmm. Where are you on this spectrum? That's a good question. I'm not sure how well tuned the laws of physics are for consciousness. I mean, I think that consciousness is a fundamental feature in the sense that, in the scheme that Stuart Hameroff and I have developed, uh, it's integ an integral part of the what one needs to make quantum mechanics make sense, if you like, the, the way that alternative things become, other than super, superimposed, as quantum mechanics would say, one or the other happens. And in that process of one or the other happening, there is an element of proto-consciousness, we claim. So in that sense, proto-consciousness is fundamental to the universe. Now, uh, in this view, the way that the laws of physics operate would require proto-consciousness. Now, it doesn't tell us that it's organized anywhere in the world enough to produce genuine consciousness, but if the world is, the universe is big enough and complicated enough, one might expect that, you know, here and there, would come about. But of course, you could imagine constants of nature adjusted in different ways so that it was so unlikely that it just wouldn't occur in, in a universe of the kind of size that we observe. But it does occur. It does occur. Now, we see maybe that would be because, well, if the universe is infinite, it wasn't within this part of the universe, but somewhere else a long mm -hmm. way off. Mm -hmm. Or it may well be that the constants of nature don't have to have those particular values. And it may be that adjusting those numbers, you could make it more probable that planets of favorable kind for the existence of the kind of life we understand could come about. So there are two ways in which what you're saying could happen. One way is that the quantum mechanics is something built into the universe, and this is how quantum mechanics works, and it just coincidentally or accidentally has this proto-consciousness which in, in the randomness of evolution, directedness in some way, produces consciousness. The other way is, is, is a more uh, uh, strong way to put it, that the universe could not have existed without that. There's somehow a causal loop involved, which some people go to. Well, of course, there's always the issue that maybe what you mean by universe could involve laws which were incompatible with consciousness coming about at all. Right. And the argument would be that we wouldn't be in such a universe, and that maybe they all kind of exist as parallel universe types, and that only that one in which consciousness can arrive can we be in, and that's a perfectly right. logical right. argument. Right. Right. It's not necessarily an argument I like. I think I take the view that what we mean by universe, and I'm not quite sure what we mean by universe, but what we mean by universe would have to involve the potential for consciousness to arise. Not quite the same, same as saying that it does arise, which might But have to is a strong word. Have to, yes. That's just a bias on my part, I think. I, it's really a question of what we mean by universe, you see. Does a universe have to be something that could be observed, in some sense? Or could a universe be just sort of dead and nothing? Do we mean a universe by such a thing? Do, is that a term that we should apply to such a construct. Mm, mm. Of course, it raises the issue whether exist, existence can come about just from some consistent mathematical scheme which you mm. might come up and does it exist for a mere platonic mm. reason that somehow mathematically consistent things have to exist. Uh -huh. So, I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, I think we get into areas where it's real hard to make any comment there. I do think there is a genuine question though about a universe a bit like ours with laws broadly like ours, but where the constants of nature happen to be just slightly different in such a way that actual conscious life would not evolve. My prejudice here is to think that these constants of nature are probably pure numbers. That is to say that if we knew enough about how the universe has to fit together, 
these numbers would have to have particular values. I have to say yeah. that a lot of the way theories have gone is the opposite way. Yes. If you take string theory, for example, oh, there was a time when people thought, oh, well, there are only yeah. a few numbers will fit, and then they find, goodness me, <laughs> zillions of different possibilities. Right. So uh, to me, that's a bad mark, if you like. <laughs> a theory which will actually tighten down and give you clear predictions on numbers, which, of course, we, we often do. I mean, where are these spectral lines? We know that they have to be in certain places because of nuclei having, right, right. I mean, it puts the blame somewhere else, but you're putting it in a place where there are less, fewer parameters to play with. Uh, you, particle physics, unfortunately, has started to go the wrong way, where <laughs> the, num the number of numbers that need to be, to be introduced to make the theory agree with, we, or make the theory work at all, uh, seem to have been increasing over the decades. <laughs> so, Which makes the fine-tuning of this universe uh, more unusual and the likelihood of multiple universes more likely. You might say that, yes. But even you see, if there are mathematical numbers, then you might say there's a incredible coincidence. Yes. These numbers come out just right, right for, <coughs> for life yes. to exist. I suppose... I, I and that feels a, wrong. Yes. I suppose I have this sort of feeling that, uh, that um, there is a sort of a global tie-up between these things. <clears throat> you do feel that way? I think so. But it's, it's, ve it's such a vague thought that I would hate to <laughs> try and elaborate yeah. on that. It's not certainly a kind of mystical idea where you say somehow there's, these numbers are adjusted for, for the need for consciousness to exist or something. It's not that kind of a view. I'm not quite sure I can express my <laughs> view more clearly. But uh, certainly my attitude to what one would call the universe would mean it has to be observed, it has to be observable. Not quite the same question, but it has to be observed or observable. But if it's infinite, then you might say, well, it has to happen somewhere. If it could, in principle, happen, then it has to happen somewhere. <laughs> I don't like that argument too much either. But, uh, <laughs> but it does seem to be a bit of an, a rare thing, as, as we know it. And I don't know how far you have to go up before the next conscious civilization, but uh, probably a long way.